it's not how smart you are, it's really how are you smart. And we all have different ways of learning. And some techniques don't necessarily work for everybody you know, the same way, just like some foods. Everyone's a little bio-individual, right? Or in relationships, not everyone's looking for the same thing. And we all, just like there's love languages, there's also a language of the brain. And it's kind of like if you are right-handed, that's your dominant hand. It doesn't mean you don't use your left hand. It's just when you're using it, you have more grace, it's more comfortable, you're more effective, takes less time. When you use your opposite hand, like if I asked everyone to write their name with their opposite hand, it would take longer. Maybe you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe the quality wouldn't be quite as good. And sometimes when we're learning something, it's like we're trying to learn it with the opposite hand. So it... Even if it's a subject we're interested in, I imagine some people listening, they're interested in a topic, for some reason they're just not getting it, but maybe you're trying to learn it with the opposite hand so it takes longer and it feels uncomfortable and it's not the quality is not quite as good. It's kind of like the way you prefer to learn something is different than the way the teacher is teaching it and it's just like you're two ships in the night and you pass each other and you don't even realize and recognize the other one's there. There's no connection, right? And so... I gave a lot of thought into this. And years ago, I created uh, an assessment for your brain to see what your dominant brain type will be. And it just takes four minutes. It's in the book, Limitless. We also have it online. We'll and, link that below as well for people. Yeah, mybrainanimal.com. And uh, and when you go through it, it, it just kind of like when you say, like, which Harry Potter character are you? Which Game of Thrones character? That kind of thing. It gives you understanding to, to know thyself better, right? And I'll just go through it really quickly. So it's a brain code. I use a lot of acronyms as a shortcut, C-O-D-E. These are the animals. And so the C is the cheetah. Now, I, I pulled from personality types like Myers-Briggs, left brain, right brain dominance, visual auditory kinesthetic learning styles, multiple intelligence theory out of Harvard, introvert, extrovert. I pulled from a lot of frameworks to create this. But once you understand your brain animal, it just makes everything easier because we give people prescriptions just like there's personalized medicine based on your a genetic test or personalized nutrition based on a microbiome test or nutrient profile test. This is like personalized learning and, and training and development based on a, a four-minute assessment, right? So the C are your cheetahs and their primary trait is action. So cheetahs, as the fastest animals on the planet, they, they thrive in fast-paced environments. They adapt very quickly. They have very strong instincts and intuition. Right. The O in code stands for your owls, and their dominant trait is logic. They love data. They love facts and figures and formulas. Um, now, just even thinking about it, those two people would buy differently. They would learn differently. They would you know, relate, communicate differently. The D in code are your dolphins, and these are their dominant trait is their creativity. These are people that could see maybe maybe they have a business, they could see, they have a vision for their business or their future. Uh, they're very passionate behind that, that vision also as well. They're great at pattern recognition. Um, and finally, the E in code are your elephants. And your elephant's dominant trait is empathy. And these are people who are your community builders. They bring people together. They want people to feel seen. They want people to feel heard. Um, they use words. Even You could even, in their language, you could tell. Like they would use less of I and my. They would use more inclusive words like, like we or us, right? So it would reflect in their communication and also you know, their criteria for learning. Because if you're going to teach someone how to read better, not only speed, but understanding and focus. Um, each of them have a different way of, because of their dominant brain traits, to to learn. And so we give people kind of a formula. And you see this, like we had our team go through this assessment and our customer service team, 100% of them are elephants. And we didn't even sort for that because people will go to their strength they'll find a role of responsibility where it's their element, right? And our, our customer service team, they're elephants because they have high empathy, they're compassionate, they want people to feel seen and heard. They want to, they build our community. You know, my business partner of 17, 18 years, our, she is our, she's our CEO, she's a dolphin. She has this vision, you know, for, the, for our mission. She holds that constant and communicates it. Uh, our CFO, our financial officer is, is an owl. Like he loves numbers, right? He's always looking at the data. 
And so it's it's interesting how it shows up. It's even in pop culture. You could take any Star Trek, you know, you like uh, Captain Kurt is like the cheetah, just goes into action. Spock would be the owl, right? Or Friends, you know, you would have Phoebe, who's the creative musician, right? The dolphin, or Ross is the professor or scientist, you know, so he's the owl. Joey is just acts, doesn't think about it, just acts. Um, so he's he's the he, he's the cheetah. You know, Monica hosts everything and wants to be the center for, of her friend group, and she's the elephant. So once you understand how you you know, again, it's not how smart you are; it's how are you smart. And in school, they don't they t- you know like if you even look at SATs, it's like verbal and mathematical, and it's like it's th- these are the things that are valued. Um, and but multiple intelligence theory. Howard Gardner's work out of Harvard says there's there's many more kinds of intelligence. Like what about musical intelligence, kinesthetic, physical intelligence, interpersonal intelligence? People are great with people. Intrapersonal intelligence, you know, self to self, uh, visual spatial intelligence. People are great artists or graphic designers. So the idea here is that your memory or your brain performance or your IQ, it's not fixed like your shoe size. Because of things that you've talked about on your show, things like neuroplasticity and neurogenesis, we could grow older, but in a lot of ways we could grow wiser. We can make new connections through novelty, just like building a muscle. You give it, you know, you want to be physical muscles, you give it novelty, you work it out, and you give it nutrition. Same thing with your mental muscles. So neuroplasticity, the, the brain's amazing uh, phenomenon to be able to adapt and make new connections. The whole idea of you know, these, these neurons that, that fire together, they wire together, right, is um, stimulus. So that's why learning is so very important, exposing yourself to new ideas and insights, and then giving yourself the proper nutrition to be able to feed that, that mental muscle. 